Hello and welcome to my channel. This is uh, Nini of Nini's Napkins and today I'm going to be uh, decoupaging a rock for the garden. So I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, first things first, you need to paint the rock, usually white. Uh, I'm going to go with a bit of an off-white today because I'm going to be doing a fall theme and uh, I don't want it to be a stark white. So we're using Country Chic All-in-One Decor Paints, which is similar to a chalk paint, uh, in Cheesecake. Now you can use a regular acrylic paint, you can even use uh, emulsion paint from a leftover uh, home painting project, uh, like wall paint. Uh, any kind of water-based paint will work. Uh, I just, uh, I wanted the off-white color so I decided to use the Country Chic Cheesecake today. So first things first, I'm just going to paint the face of my rock. I tend to uh, just paint just the face of it. I don't paint the whole rock. A lot of people do. Uh, it's all personal preference. I just kind of, I like leaving part of the rock to make it really obvious that uh, it was a real rock. Um, but lots of people like to paint the whole rock and that is okay too. It's whatever you prefer. So I just kind of go around with the shape of the rock. This rock's not totally smooth, so it's got some little nooks and crannies that I've got to get into. There, so I've got one coat of paint on. I could probably stop there, but I'll probably do another quick coat after it's dry. So I'm going to get my ranger tool. I mentioned in the last video that I did that uh, we really like these ranger heated craft tools at Nenny's because they uh, they don't make a lot of noise, so they're really good for using in workshops or even while you're filming. Uh, and there's not a whole lot of uh, air to them, so you can see, like, if I'm, you know, if you were doing a paper craft project and you wanted to dry your page, it's not going to blow things all over the place. Uh, but it does get quite hot, so you don't want to hold it too close to your paint, or you may cause it to bubble. And the important thing is to just keep it moving. And we do sell these at Nenny's. I will add a link in the description box to all of the products used in this video. We do carry Country Chic paints. Uh, we carry this nice brush, um, Stamperia or Stamperia flat brush. It's out of stock at the moment, but we should have it again very early in September. This is taking a little bit longer to dry than normal because of the nooks and crannies. There's quite a bit of paint in there. The first one I went really thick because I was really trying to uh, fill in some of the crannies, but uh, this one's just going to be a thin coat. Just trying to uh, lighten up some of these dark areas. Uh, now, a question you might have is do we have to paint? the rock. Not necessarily. It depends on the look you're going for. It's the same story with wood. I hear that a lot. Do we have to paint the wood? Uh, if you want the wood grain pattern to show through your design, through your napkin, um, you can go ahead and just decoupage straight onto the wood. It will mean that your napkin image will be uh, darker. Sometimes that's a really good thing. It gives it a kind of a vintage vibe. Uh, but yeah, you're not going to get a really bright popping image, bright popping color 
um, from your napkin without the white background. Um, so the same with the rock. Yeah, I'm sure you could do some really cool things with napkins on rocks without painting it. Um, but uh, for today's project, I'm, I choose to paint it and I normally do paint my rocks. Okay, so the napkins I've chosen for today are some of our newer fall napkins. Uh, these all come from the same brand, so the colors go really well together. And so I'm thinking of kind of two focal images and then filling in the space with this beautiful napkin. I love these ones where you unfold them and the whole pattern continues over. It makes it a lot more versatile for larger projects. Okay, so what I need to do now is water cut. Actually, first I'm going to separate my napkins and I didn't bring any painters tape with me to my desk so I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way pull it apart with my fingernails and just one layer uh, as I've said in previous videos uh, good quality napkins which are usually printed in Europe always have a total of three plies, so the printed ply of the napkin. I'm just going to rip it a little bit here because I don't need this part of the napkin anyway. The, the printed part of the napkin and then two white layers. And if you were to accidentally forget to remove a layer, uh, you're going to find a lot of bubbling and wrinkling when you go to decoupage. So you really want to make sure that you've only got the top layer. So there's one. This time hopefully I get both layers at the same time. There we go, look at that. This time I got two layers off at once. And we'll save these for cleaning up later or for stamping on, stenciling on. So I'm going to start with these two because I'm going to apply these onto the rock first and then once uh, I know where these are going then I'll start cutting out some of this to fill in the spaces. Uh, so I've got my water here and really nice fine brush. I'll move that one out of the way. And first I might just cut loosely. around the image just so I'm working with a smaller piece here uh, so if you've never shopped at, at uh, Ninny's napkins before uh, we sell our napkins in pairs so when you're purchasing a napkin you're gonna get two napkins which usually means eight images good for eight projects um, in some cases, obviously, that's with the uh, the pattern napkin, you're getting one really large image, so two, because you get two napkins. So I'm just cutting around the image with my wet brush. So there, now I've got my uh, cute little bird on the mailbox, all water cut, set him aside, and I cut my, cut out my mason jar, if you uh, follow uh, Creative Katie Karen Birchall on YouTube, uh, you've probably seen her do water cutting many, many times. She's quite fast at it and quite good at it. And if you're not following her, uh, maybe you should be. It's 
She does a lot of uh, mixed media tutorials, a lot of art journaling stuff. Uses napkins quite often. Uses napkins from Nenny's. Okay, there. I think that's pretty good. I could go in and take a lot more out, but I don't really feel it's necessary, especially for a rock. So now our rock, the paint on our rock should be pretty dry. There we are. Yep, nice and dry. So what I'm going to use um, for our uh, for the rock in order to be able to put it outside in the garden. Uh, and to protect the napkin from moisture, obviously, and from UV so it doesn't fade. Um, and this also protects from mold and mildew. We're going to use uh, Polyvine Heavy Duty Extreme Varnish. Uh, it's totally waterproof. I'm going to be using it in the dead flat because I don't want this rock to have any shine. Uh, it also comes in a satin. Uh, we carry Polyvine Varnishes at Ninnies. I will put a link to this in the uh, description box as well. Uh, it clear, cures very, very quickly, just 16 hours to cure, uh, which means probably, you know, 24 hours later, we can already go ahead and put the rock in the garden and not have to worry about it. And we'll be doing three coats. Uh, I'm going to use this as my glue as well. You don't have to, but I figure it's less clean up that way, and you really don't use a lot of it. I know glue would be probably cheaper, but... Um, you're going to use very little. A little goes a long way. So I've just poured a bit in a container here. And I think, I had thought about it earlier, I think I want to place this guy about here. Oh, maybe I don't have as much room as I thought. Okay. I think I'm going to cut off a bit of this uh, Chinese lantern here. Just gonna, I can see the white part of the rock now. If I had painted the whole rock white, I wouldn't have to do that. Uh, but I really don't mind. There, just get that fit on there a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna use my nice flat brush and just paint on some of this polyvine. Uh, Polyvine is also uh, low VOCs, so totally safe to use indoors. There's very little smell, if any at all. As with, with any product, you should have proper ventilation, but uh, this stuff's pretty, pretty good, pretty safe. There, I'm just going to lay that down. And honestly, you don't even really have to put any glue behind or varnish behind because one, I'm doing this, it'll just soak right through the napkin. Um, even though the napkin is dry, uh, we're not doing the water method for this. You can do the water method of decoupage on a rock. I don't find it necessary. Uh, you're not trying to get a super smooth finish. Rocks are not smooth to begin with. Oh, I almost... I almost folded that there, but I saved it. Look at that, isn't that adorable? And uh, even though our background color is not bright white, the napkin still blends in really well. You can't really tell where the edges of the napkin are. Um, but I, I, as I was saying, you could just um, do your varnish right over your napkin. Uh, I tend to just put a little bit behind just to help it stay in place. If you go and try and start uh, varnishing right over the top, uh, it might move. So there, that just helps to stick it down a little bit while I varnish over top. Just I love the colors of this napkin. The teal or turquoise of the mailbox and the jar with the uh, fall oranges and yellows and greens. There. I think I'm going to dry that a little bit first before I add any more. Ok, 
Okay, that, that's a little bit dry. So now, I'm just gonna separate this napkin. We haven't always posted a lot of videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, didn't really have a lot of space before to do this kind of thing and to do filming and feels like it took a long time to get a good setup with cameras and lights and uh, but now in the new building our new studio in Everett Ontario we have a lot more space uh, I can leave things like the lights out and set up so it's not a pain you know every time we want to film so I think you'll be seeing a lot more tutorials from us in the near future. So now if I hold the napkin over here like this I can see kind of the jar and that in between. And I don't want any partial partial leaves or anything um, so I'm just going to kind of cut around some of these fuller ones that aren't overlapping what we already have. And I've never done it this way before, so bear with me. Hopefully this works. This could have been a little bit drier. Now my napkin's trying to stick on there. That's all right. So like this one here has got a cut edge. I don't want that one. I'm just going to go around it. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this, uh, let us know that in the comments. Let us know what other things you'd like to see, what other products that we carry that you'd like to see used. Um, I think in the near future I plan to do some on uh, Stamperia's uh, soft uh, extra light clay. I have a few cool ideas for that, so there, I think I'm good there, and then I'm just going to go cut around where the paint is behind. Tonight in the studio, a friend of ours, Lori, is going to be teaching a mixed media canvas workshop and myself and Diane who works here we're actually going to be participants tonight so we're really looking forward to that so there there's that piece now I'm just going to go ahead and decoupage that on that's stuck there a little bit okay Back up. Haha, uh -huh, easier said than done. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Whenever I'm doing my coat of varnish on the top, I try and start in the middle of the piece of napkin and work my way out. That way you can kind of push out any wrinkles or bubbles or Looks pretty good, I think. A little bit of excess napkin here, so I'm just going to try and push that back a bit with the brush. Just 
just bunching it up a little bit there. All right, look at that. Now if I want to, I can go, you know, cut out some really small pieces to fill in these spots. I might just do that after, but I'm going to flip this whole thing around, make it a little bit easier to work with, especially since all this is wet down here now. I'm going to get my napkin back, and I'm actually just going to rip some of it off to make it a little smaller and easier to work with. And I don't know if you can see this on the camera. I'm just going to take some of these off right away that are just partial pieces. There. See if I can get that. Oh, look at that. That'll fit right nicely in there. So I kind of want these three. I'm going to take this out here. Actually, maybe this time I'll try. I'm not going to lift the napkin up. I'm just going to try and hold it down and see if I can just add my varnish right now over top and get it to stick down. That way I don't have to try and line it up again. And I don't want this piece here. If you watch enough of my videos, you're going to learn that I'm not very coordinated. <laughs> it feels like a lot of times my hands are not doing what my brain is asking them to do. I'm sure some of you can relate. Okay. Right there. I like that. I think that's really cool. I'm going to try and cut out a few more small pieces. Oh, this one's water. Maybe this acorn here. I kind of like the acorn. fit there. Uh, it's a bit big for there, but maybe maybe here. There. That's a good spot for it. Getting all my brushes mixed up. There's a little acorn there. Maybe this, uh, I don't know what kind of seed or nut this is. Maybe from a hazelnut. Not sh quite sure. I'll go stick that down right there. It's a little smaller. There. Look at that. And it just it's so seamless. Once you get it on there, you would never know that this was all once, you know, multiple pieces of napkins. Maybe something small here. I don't know if I've got anything small enough. I don't want to do another one of these seed pods. Oh, I think that's good enough. That looks pretty good. So now, once this is dry, I'm not going to mess with it again because now the napkins are uh, delicate, but once this is all dry, I'm going to give it another two or three coats of the Polyvine Heavy Duty Extreme. Uh, and then, uh, and I, I tend to come over a little bit onto the rock. You could really coat the whole rock if you wanted to, but I'll, I'll go an inch or so over just to create a barrier. And uh, yeah, and then within 24 hours, I, it can go straight outside into the garden. I've had rocks like this that I've done in my garden three years ago. 
uh, and they still look pretty good. After in the third summer, the uh, napkin does start to fade a little bit. I've never tried recoating the polyvine to see if that would prevent that. Um, but I think what I'll do with my rocks that are starting to fade is I'll just go over the napkin now with acrylic paint and then uh, give it another couple of coats of polyvine and it should be good for many more years to come. Uh, I, I would recommend bringing them in if you have, if you live in a place like we do with uh, a lot of snow and, and below freezing temperatures. You should probably bring it in the, in the winter, but I'll admit I have forgotten in the past and didn't really seem to affect it too much. This uh, Polyvine Heavy Duty Extreme, I mean, this isn't just for crafters. This is a, uh, it says, the strongest of all one-pack varnishes, dries in minutes and cures in just 16 hours to pre protect interior and exterior surfaces. Um, but yeah, you can use this on, uh, they call it, say, industrial level of protection, so you can use this um, for countertops, tabletops, even floors. Um, See, so industrial level of finish, high UV resistance, it's waterproof. Um, high resistance to chemicals, alcohols, and stains. Uh, a high abrasion resistance, it's ultra hard. Uh, waterproof, yeah, interior, exterior. So uh, I actually, uh, earlier today, I was uh, putting it on the bare wood on my uh, garden shed that my husband built. He, he milled the wood, so it's just bare pine. And uh, I, I'm going to cover the whole shed in polyvine to protect it. And that should uh, stop the wood from rotting and from molding and mildew. And it probably will even stop it from, uh, you know, wood sometimes does that graying. Um, yeah, we're going to do our deck with it. I, I'm going to paint my front door soon with Country Chic Paints and we're going to cover the door in the polyvine. It's really very versatile um, and it's uh, the best product out there that I know of. Um, so we do highly recommend it. Okay, well thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you will try it yourself. Uh, as I said, please leave us a comment if you enjoyed the video. We'd appreciate it if you would like the video. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful day.